with us. We are so excited and pumped for what God is going to do tonight. Let me tell you, he is going to show up tonight right there where you're at. We have some exciting things. We have Tony and Yami and Eric and David Bruno, the team is going to be leading us in worship tonight. Man, we cannot wait for that. And then in a little bit, the little baby and I are going to be bringing a message for you for back to school. But before we do that, we want to do something with you guys. We, If you haven't already found the live chat feature, there's a reason why we've been overemphasizing this. We did it in the countdown. We did it last week. We did it on social media. But we want to engage with you guys during this time. And so we want you guys messaging on there, emojis, quotes, hallelujahs, amen, excitement, you know, talking to one another. We have some leaders that are going to be there with you guys during that time. And so please be sure to be active on that live chat. There's a reason for that. We just want you guys to be having a good time. Just because there's distance between us does not mean that the fire of God is limited in any way. And so, in fact, while you guys are doing there in the live chat and finding it, I want you guys to do something for me. Let us know what is the thing that you're looking forward to the most about school this year. See, whether you're in person, whether you're online, whether you're virtual, what is something that you're looking forward to this year? Maybe for some of you guys, you're juniors for the first time, you're entering middle school for the first time. Whatever that looks like, what are you most excited about the school year? Now, while you guys are doing that, I'm going to go ahead and chime on there and see you guys a little bit. I see y'all on there. I see your chats coming in. Let me just send you a little greeting myself so you guys know that we're watching you guys, so that you guys know that we are just here to have a good time with you guys in God's presence. There you go. And so go ahead and be active during that time because we do want to be able to give away some gift cards. In fact, we're, let's go ahead and give a gift card away right now. Go ahead and tell us what is the thing you're looking forward to the most about school this year. And as you do that, our leaders are going to be keeping track and seeing who is posting, who is commenting on there, who is chatting with us. And out of those, we're going to pick somebody to get a gift card after service tonight. And so go ahead and get on there. Let us know. Ring it up. But during the whole service, we'll keep be keeping our eyes on that because we want to be able to give away a gift card to someone that is the most active during service today in the chat. And so be sure to be doing some emojis on there, whether it's the hallelujah hands, the clapping hands, the fireballs, the quotes, the hearts, the whole thing. Be sure to get on there. Let us know how you're feeling. Let us know that you're having a good time because we're having a good time with you guys. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and start in a, in a, in just in a word of prayer and allow God to just manifest himself right there where you're at here in service with us. Dear Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that we get to have a good time together, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you're here with us, Lord God, and that you have some awesome things in store for us, Lord. I pray, Father God, show up tonight in a big way. Show up tonight in a massive way, God. We want to see you. We want to sense you. We want to feel you, Father God. We want to be in the midst of you during this time, Lord. We thank you for, for what you're going to do. In your precious name we pray. Amen. So go ahead and put your hands together, and let's get into a time of worship. Lift 
such a good time. I went ahead and stood up, lifted my hands. I was jamming. I was doing the bob. I just couldn't help myself. I was coming alive in the river. And so guys, please just engage with us during this time. Have a good time. Lift your hands. Let God's presence be there. If you need to kneel in your, in your living room or if you need to kneel in your room, wherever it is that you're at, we want you guys to just feel the presence of God as exciting as it is here. It is exciting right there where you guys are at. But let's go ahead and get into a game. We want to be able to give a gift card away. So for those of you guys that know, youth runs from 6th grade to 12th grade. It's such a fun time in middle school and high school. But let me tell you, there's a lot of things that we learn in elementary school. I don't know about you guys, but elementary school kids are pretty smart. They know what they're talking about. They've learned some stuff in school. Man, they know the facts. You know, they know the science. They know the math. They know the history. I mean, they really know that stuff. And so tonight, we want to play a game called, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Now, you might be familiar with this game, but the way that it works is there are various categories that we're going to present, and we're going to give you guys a question. Now, in the chat, the person that is getting the most points, that means the most correct answers and the fastest, in the chat, those are going to be the persons that are going to be eligible to win this gift card. And so you're going to want to make sure that you get the answer correct and also that you're the fastest in the chat. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. But we have our science question for today. My favorite subject in school. Let me tell you, that was a good one. But science, let's look at this. It says, what are the three states of matter? What are the three states of matter? So don't Google it. Don't be, uh, don't be cheating during this time. We want you guys to know the answer to this. So what are the three states of matter? Go ahead and let us know right there in the chat. What are the three states of matter? Come on, the fastest and the most correct. And so go ahead, go ahead and put that on there. We're, our leaders are looking to see, making sure that you guys are doing what you're doing for our science question. All right, let's get into history. Now, I don't know about y'all, but history was not an easy subject for me. I hope it is for you, but we're going to make sure that it's a little easy for you guys. But Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were the first two men in the entire world to do what? Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were the first two men in the entire world to do what? Go ahead and let us know right there in the chat. Come on, I know you guys know this. This one's an easy, come on, you're Houston people. You got to know this one. You got to know this one. And so go ahead and put it there in the chat. Let us know who uh, were the first two men in the entire world to do what? Come on, our history question. All right, for those of you that are really into geography, let's go ahead and do a geography question. All right, a geography question. How many Great Lakes are there in the United States? How many Great Lakes are there in the United States? Let us know in the chat. How many Great Lakes are there in the United States? In fact, bonus points if you can name what those Great Lakes are. So don't look it up. Don't be cheating. We know if you're doing that. And so make sure that you guys let us know. Come on, go ahead and text it in right there in the chat. Whether it's below me or beside me, come on. How many Great Lakes are there in the United States? Bonus points if you can name them. If you can name them. All right, let's get into an English language arts. I hope you guys like this subject. Come on, it is a good subject to, to know. But who are the creators of the classic book characters? 
Tom Sawyer, and Huckleberry Finn. So who is the creator, or you could say the author, of the classic book characters Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn? So I hope you guys have been reading over the summer. I hope you guys have been staying on top of your reading that you had a sign or whether you had to do some summer reading. But this is something that we should have learned in elementary school is who wrote about these two characters. Come on, let us know. It's a famous name, a classical author. Come on, you know this. I believe in you. You guys are above elementary school. I know you're smarter than a fifth grader. So who is the creator of the classic book characters, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn? All right, let's go ahead and end it with a math question. So for those of you guys that are super smart, I know you guys have got this one, but it's a classic math question that comes up in any movie in every classroom that we ever see. But if a train leaves the station and travels at 60 miles per hour, how much time will have passed when it arrives at a station 300 miles away? If a train leaves the station at, and travels at 60 miles per hour, how much time will have passed when it arrives at a station 300 miles away? So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time on that so that you guys can kind of look at it, think about it. It's not as complicated as it sounds. You guys got this. I believe in you. You're smarter than a fifth grader. I know you are. And so go ahead and let us know in the chat. We're going to take a few moments and just look at those answers, see who, which of you guys is eligible for that gift card. Now, don't forget, if you're just tuning in, to go ahead and go to Instagram right after this service. Whether you have Instagram or not, you can still access our account. You just go to Instagram.com slash LTAB Youth. If you guys are, you know, just plugging in, you got to go to LTAB Youth right after service we're going to be letting you guys know who the winners of those gift cards are you're going to want to check it out because we need a little bit of information to be able to send those your way and so go ahead and right there where you're at go ahead and send that out to us um those answers in the chat we're going to come up with who won this are you smarter than a fifth grader challenge but i hope you guys are having a good time during the service let me tell you it has been a good time here. The presence of God is moving, and we believe that he is just about to do something crazy in your life. There's so many things that have been going on throughout these past few months that we've been away from one another. But let me tell you, that did not stop God from doing what he wanted to do. And so right there where you're at, as we get into a time of worship and as the team leads us, I want to invite you to really get into the presence of God. What I mean by that is don't be limited by the fact that you're on a phone or you're on a computer. I want to invite you guys to even stand up. I want to invite you to lift up your hands. I want to invite you to just cry. Cry out to the Lord. If you need to weep before God, if you need to cry before the Lord, just do so. If you need to kneel, go ahead and kneel. Nobody is looking. Nobody is going to be judging you. Let me tell you, God is pleased when we come out and crazy in worship. And so I want you to invite you guys right there where you're at. Even if you can just start getting into the attitude of worship, just begin to allow the Holy Spirit to fill that space where you guys are at because he wants to do something radical right there where you're standing. Lord, we thank Thank you, Father God, that you are with us tonight, Lord, that you're doing something new and something amazing, Lord, that you are not limited by any way by that physical place that we're standing. And so, Lord, tonight, continue to move, continue to breathe your fire on us, Lord, because we believe that you are going to do something powerful, something spirit-led tonight, God. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Let's get into a time of worship. to spend a time of worship to devote yourselves to God right now and let's lift up his, your hands where you're at right there and let's just ask God to show us his glory we know that it's been a tough season I know it but God has a purpose in your life in this next season and I want you to ask the Lord Lord show us what you want us to do show us your glory in the midst of all this torment we are trusting in you Jesus Praise your holy name.
moment that we see you, we are changed. Show us your glory, show us your glory. In wonder and surrender, we fall down. Show us your glory, show us your glory. Let every burning. Right there where you're at. 
that with your eyes closed, I want you to hear these words. Hallelujah. It says that chains fall and fear bows here right now where you're at, right there on your knees. If you have your eyes closed and your hands raised, I know there is torment. There's probably trouble from the enemy trying to attack you. But I can tell you right now that Jesus, hallelujah, the blood of Jesus, it says right there and his word declares it, that it changes everything. If there is brokenness, he is healing. If there is death, there is life. If there is hopelessness, he is hope. If you feel lost, then he, he will find you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just have to bow down right there where you're at and declare it. Sing it with your voice out loud. Nobody's listening right now. Just declare it. Change. Oh, fear. It bows here now. Jesus, you change everything. Life healed. Hope found here now. Jesus, you change everything. Change for fear. It bows here now. Jesus, you change everything. Life. Trusting in you, Jesus, that you change all things. You change them for good, for the good of your children. Oh, we just praise your name, Jesus. Keep your hands up right there where you're at. Praise the holy name of God. Jesus, you're worthy, Lord. We praise your holy name. We praise your holy name. We praise your holy name. There's nothing else you can say. Just say the name of Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for the good and the bad, for the in-between, for the lessons learned, Lord. For this, we worship you. In every lesson that you teach us, God, we pray that you will shoot us out like arrows so that we may speak to a hurting world. Fill our hearts and our guts with fire, our mouths with fire to speak to a dying nation, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we declare it and we believe it and we receive it over every person that's watching this today. We praise your holy name. in worship during this time. It's been such a powerful time, and I hope you've been having a good time. Let us know there in the live chat where you're watching us from, where you're tuning in from, whether you're north side, whether you're in Humble, whether you're in Spring, whether wherever it is that you're watching us from, we want to know so that we can connect with you on this for a little bit. But I hope you've been having a good time, and I want to invite you to just hang tight with us for the next brief moments. We want to get into the word, but don't forget that we are giving away a gift card for those that are the most active during the live chat. So go ahead and send a little emoji on there. You know, put a quote from the message tonight. You know, go ahead and give me a hallelujah, come on, preacher, preacher, get it, hermana, whatever it is that you want to say during that time, because we do want to engage with you and know what you guys are thinking, what you guys are feeling during this time. 
but it cannot be said enough how unconventional this time has been for us in COVID and not even that, that but just going into back to school, going to, you know, whether it's virtual, whether it's in person, man, let me tell you, it is unconventional how this school year is looking and starting like. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, those of you that know me, those of y'all that have been around since January, but we started this year talking about basics and going back to the basics. But tonight we want to do a little different because let me tell you, it has been so crazy during this time that let's bring it a little bit more familiar, a little deeper, and deal with some things that maybe we've been dealing during this whole time. Now, I want to bring to you guys' attention just something that we know about, something that we have seen before. In fact, that object is a kickball. Now, this is a soccer kickball, something like that, but let me tell you, we're all familiar with an object like this. Now, in elementary school, I remember whenever they would bring out the kickball, it was like we just knew instantly what was about to go down. Now, kickball was one of those games where either you were really excited about it or you were, like, dreading it. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I'm not very good at sports. So I remember whenever it came down to kickball, I had friends that were like, yes, you know, let's get this. They knew where that, uh, you know, that they wanted to kick it as far as they, you know, could. And they wanted to see if they improved on their skills from last time. But for someone like me who wasn't very good at sports, I would look at a kickball or so uh, soccer ball and say, great. Now everybody's about to know how good or how bad I am at sports right now. And let me tell you, I felt like it would put the spotlight on me anytime that I would go to kick just because I knew that it was not good news that we're going to be coming out of my feet. But this object is something so familiar to us, something so basic that you could even call it a basic PE experience for each of us. We knew what this looked like. We knew what it meant. Most of the time, we already knew what the rules sounded like and what role or place we were going to play in this game. But for so many of us, when we describe something as basic, let me put it in definition for you. When we describe something as basic, we're describing it to be simple, to be regular, to be dull, and perhaps even boring. In fact, perhaps maybe some of you guys have been called basic at some point in your life. Maybe at some point somebody has called you dull or simple. Maybe somebody has called you boring or felt that your lifestyle was a little different than theirs and therefore you were just a basic individual compared to everybody else. In fact, maybe you've called somebody that at some point in your life, but can I tell you something? You are not basic. There is nothing basic about you. There is nothing simple or regular or dull or boring about you. And there is a, a creator of life that tonight wants to tell you that you are better than basic. In fact, regardless of this COVID time, regardless of what you've been going through this time, Going into the school year presents an opportunity for each of us to shift something in our atmosphere, to shift something in our hearts and in our minds. Because every time that we go back to a school year, a new school year, it always looks a little different. It's always what we call a fresh start, where we know that there's some changes that can be made either because no one knows us or because there's been some growth during the summer. In fact, they've done the research and said that there's just something about teenagers that happen during the summer. They think it's because you sleep more during the summer and you're snoozing during that time, but you actually physically grow a little taller during the summer. I don't know if you've ever noticed that you always need back to school clothes and it's not always because you need cool clothes, but it just seems like your pants fit a little different, your shoes fit a little different. It's all crazy and whack. And next thing you know, you're like, Ma, I know you just bought me these chanclas, but I need a little something more because my, my stature is growing, my feet are growing. But that's something physical that happens during that summer but let me tell you there's something that is happening in you spiritually during the summer because you've been allowed a break for God to speak into your heart and into your mind and you guys are not going back into the school year just like any other school year something in you has shifted 
And perhaps some of you guys are even just a little unsure of what to expect as you go into the school year. How to see others in light of social distancing and even what to expect. Did you know that the way that you see yourself and the way that you see other people has a way of setting the tone for a new school year? Let me say that a little bit again. That did you know that the way that you see yourself and the way that you see other people has a way of setting a tone for a whole new school year? And tonight, we want to redefine the word basic by breaking it down and seeing how we can see ourselves and other people through God's eyes. So let's start with the beam. I want the B tonight to stand for be secure and how God sees you. If you have your Bibles or just listen in, it'll be on the screen. In Genesis 1.27, it says, So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So see, it says here so plainly that we've been created by the image of God. What that says is that the attributes of God are reflected in who we are as created beings. That means that when the Bible says that God is all-knowing, that God is all-powerful, that God is gentle, that God is love, all these attributes, I don't know about you, but none of these sound basic to me. And the attributes of God, according to that passage, are reflected on us because we were created in the image of God. Let me tell you, there is nothing basic about you. And if humanity was created to be a visible representation of who God is and what he's like, we need to begin to realize our value as God's creation. Come on, somebody. You need to be valuing yourself as a created being of God. He that created the whole universe created what you look in the mirror every day. Now, it's crazy. There's people their entire lives that w will go through everything that they accomplish and not realize the potential that they had on the world. A man by the name of John Quincy Adams was the, was the sixth president of the United States. He held more political offices than anyone in the history of our country. He was president, a senator, a congressman, the secretary of state, the United States minister to five different nations. But after his retirement, he was even reelected to Congress and was among the people most active in opposition to the practice of slavery. In fact, you could even say that John Quincy Adams was a statesman who played a large part in the nation that you and I live in. But when he arrived to the age of 70 years old, he made the following statement. I want you to pay attention to this. One of the most historical presidents that we had. He said, my whole life has been a succession of disappointments. I didn't have any success in anything I undertook. See, at the end of his life, John Quincy Adams was struggling with who he was. He struggled with the things that he did, the stuff he was able to accomplish, and someone that by resume had done so many things for the nation that we live in. At the end of his life, he felt basic. Can I tell you that that does not have to be your story? Do not allow the negative actions of your past to determine your future. Don't allow this season of isolation to determine your potential value and worth. Do not allow the lies of the enemy that want to say so many things about you determine where you're going to go in life. Don't ever get to the end of your life having not realized the value that you had and the impact that you were able to make in this world. Instead, realize that God's not asking you to be perfect, but to be holy and set apart. 
realize that God has given you unique and special abilities that are different than any person who has ever lived or ever will live. Realize that Jesus already stated your value when he died on the cross and labeled you priceless. He said you are better than basic. You will never be secure in who you're trying to become if you're trying to become anyone other than who God created you to be. God needs you to know that you can be secure in your identity because he created you out of love and you belong to him. The A in basic stands for ask God then for help to see yourself and others the way God sees you. See, our culture so often times determine our value. You know, we determine value by what we do, by our career path, by the grades that we get, the schools that we go to, the friends that we have, the likes that we get on social media. Man, we are determined by culture how valuable we are. But let me tell you, there is no one and nothing that could ever give you value because the only person that could ever give you value is the person that created you. The person that created you holds the universe in his hands because he created all living things and the whole atmosphere. As we discussed, our value comes from God alone. But if you struggle with seeing yourself as better than basic, I want to encourage you then to ask God for help. Not only are we called to see ourselves in a certain way and to value ourselves, but we're called to see other people as valuable. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I understand that it can be unnerving to be around people again. Let me tell you, I know the feeling that when you go to a place and you've been exposed with people or been around people for the very first time, just the exhausting feeling of having to be on edge the whole time and then going home, having to maybe wash or disinfect yourself in a way so that we're able to just go on, you know, being at home. It can be unnerving to trust people again. To see them as something other than potentially COVID caring people. But just because we have to social distance ourselves from other people doesn't mean that we have to put distance between loving other people. Let me say that again. Just because you have to social distance yourself from people does not mean you put distance between the way you love other people. We are called to see other people as valuable. And can I be so bold as to say that if you struggle with loving other people, it could just be that you're struggling with loving yourself first. See, a lot of the time we forget. We forget that we have to see ourselves the way that God needs us to be seen first before we can see other people the way he needs us to see others and if for tonight maybe you've been struggling with loving what you're looking at in the mirror, maybe you've been struggling with the things that you've accomplished, maybe you've been struggling with your faith, with how perfect your walk can be, can I tell you that God is not looking at that. He loves you and he will never take that love away from you. There is nothing you can be, there is nothing you can do that could ever make him love you any more than the way that he already thinks of you. And in order to see other people the way God created them, you got to be able to see yourself the way that God created you. We are made in the image of God. That challenges us then with, number, with letter S. Seek out ways then to encourage others to see themselves the way God sees them. You've probably met somebody in your life that tore other people down to make themselves look good. Maybe you, you've mentioned this person. Maybe you've known this person. Maybe it's happened to you. Maybe you are that person. But a lot of the time we call these people bullies because what they do is they try to lessen other people so that they can see more. You know what's crazy is bullies, by definition, are hurt people that hurt people. 
a lot of the time they're struggling with the way that they see themselves. Therefore, seeing the flaws in other people makes them seem a little better about themselves. So as believers, sometimes it can be difficult for us to respond to someone that tries to criticize us, someone that insults us or put us down. But I want to challenge you to realize that people that put other people down have not realized yet how much God values them. Instead of being hurt or insulted, I want to challenge you. Pray for opportunities to be able to minister to them and to show them the way that God sees them. I want to challenge you to, sh to pray for opportunities to show love and to help them realize that they are created in God's image. If you have your Bibles or not, write it down. It says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 48, it puts it so plainly here. You're familiar with the old written law, love your friend. And it's unwritten companion, hate your enemy. I'm challenging that, and this is Jesus speaking. I'm telling you to love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond with the energies of prayer. For then you are working out of your true selves, your God-created selves. This is what God does. He gives his best, the sun to warm and the rain to nourish to everyone regardless, the good and the bad, the nice and the nasty. In fact, if all you do is love the lovable, do you expect a bonus? Anyone can do that. If you simply say hello to those who greet, greet you, do you expect a medal? Any run-of-the-mill sinner does that. In a word, what I'm saying is, grow up. Your kingdom people, now live like it. Live out your God-created identity. Live generously and graciously towards other people the way God lives towards you. Do not allow the way that you treat, excuse me, do not allow the way others treat you to define your value, but do not allow you to define the value of other people by the way they treat you. You and others were made in the image of God. So stand up. Stand up and hold your head up high. Stand up and pray for them and kill the evil with kindness. Let God show you how to big, best and show compassion towards other people. The letter I am basic. I want to bring it a little back to you guys. Those of you that are struggling a little bit with maybe perhaps who you are. The I am basic is identify the areas that you struggle with the way God sees you. If I can be so bold to say that if tonight you are struggling with too much pride, if you think too much of yourself, you're struggling with self-image. If you don't think much of yourself, if you're insecure with yourself, you're struggling with self-image. An unhealthy view of yourself has the potential to remain for the remainder of your life. If until you allow God to be with you in your struggles and with your identity. Let me tell you, I want to bring you back to John Quincy Adams. A man that, that accomplished so much in his lifetime, never allowed God to determine his value or his identity. Therefore, he struggled till the very end to understand that he had made a difference in the world that we live in. Can I tell you tonight, do not allow the end of your life to come and you to still question who you are. Identify the areas that you're struggling with, seeing yourself the way that God sees you. And lastly, once you've identified the areas that are hardest for you to accept about yourself, let we get to the C. Communicate how you feel when someone challenges the way God sees you. What I mean by this is that no one likes to be insulted. And when we receive unfair criticism, can I give you permission that it's okay to let people know that they've hurt you? It's okay to let people know that they've hurt you because bottling up your feelings, 
Bottling up that anger, bottling up that bitterness doesn't do you any good. It does not add any value or take any value away from the person you want to get revenge from, but it will haunt you till the end of your days because it will diminish what you think you can accomplish because you've allowed the way that other people see you to determine that value. It's okay for us to confront those that have hurt us. It's okay for us to seek a process that means we find closure. It's okay for us to discover the person that hurt you was actually holding hurt against their own heart. It's okay to forgive people. Because by doing that, we are moving past the hurt and entering into a life free from that individual. Sometimes we just have to communicate how we truly feel and be honest with ourselves. Let me tell you, too many times we get to that place where we have allowed other people or even ourselves to captivate us. Now tonight, as you noticed, I haven't made mention too much about COVID and going back to school. I haven't made too much mention about how difficult maybe these past few months were for you. I haven't made mention about how some of you guys are sitting in front of the computer five to seven hours having school and then doing another three of homework. I haven't talked about the struggles because you don't need me to tell you that stuff. You don't need me to tell you about how hard it's been and how hard it's going to be. You already know that stuff. But the reason why I wanted us to get together tonight, the reason why I wanted this message to be about more than that is because there are things that some of you guys are carrying that you were carrying long before COVID. There are areas in your life that have been captivated by the enemy and they need to be released tonight in the name of Jesus. There are things that are holding you back from you entering into your full potential. And let me tell you, you didn't need COVID to confront those things anymore because you know exactly the things that I'm talking about. There are areas in our lives where we need to love ourselves a little better and maybe love other people around us a little better. And let me tell you, God wants to free you up tonight from those things that are holding you back. In fact, can I be so bold to say to everyone in here tonight, and in fact, somebody needs to hear this tonight right there where you're at, and I'm looking straight at you, and God is looking straight at you. God did not pause his potential in you when life paused itself on you. He has, is always, and always will be working in you. Come on, somebody. Someone needs to hear this tonight. God did not pause his potential in you when life hit pause. He always has been, always will be, and is always at work. And God is at work tonight in your heart. God is at work in your mind. God is at work in your spirit. And he has been working every moment of every day during this COVID so that you would confront some things that maybe you've been carrying for much too long. Can I tell you that you need to be freed from those things? Because when we begin to see ourselves as God sees us, there is nothing standing in our way. You begin to understand that you shouldn't settle for anything less than you deserve. You begin to understand that because you're a created being, you don't have to fall into the pressure of everybody asking you to do something you know you shouldn't do at school. In fact, when you understand that you are a created being, it takes away the, the competition factor. It takes away the, the, the whole value factor that the world could give you. And it's not about your drive in school. It won't be about pleasing your teacher or pleasing other people or doing what friends want you to do. It won't be about gaining any access but to please God and to reach out for help from the one who created you. The one that has the reason and the ability and the power to shift things for you on your behalf. It is time young people to release those heavy things it is time for you to be set free from what's been holding you back so that you realize that your potential your purpose your worth 
your value can only come from the God that created you. Right there where you're at, I want to pray for you. Let me tell you, it's going to be a little different this year, not because COVID showed up. It's going to be a little different this year because God showed up. God showed up in your life, and you're stepping into this new year as a created being of God. Right there where you're at, I want you to just bow your heads. If you feel led, I want you to lift your hands, and I want you to place one on your heart. Right there where you're at at home, begin to allow this message to sink into your heart, sink into your spirit, young people. Allow God to just manifest himself right there where you're at. Come on, somebody. Lift those hands. Put the hand on your heart because God is ministering right there where you're at. Oh, yes, hallelujah. Lord, I pray for every young person that is watching this tonight, Lord. I pray for every individual that has tuned in tonight, Lord. I believe that in the name of Jesus... I believe that in the name of Jesus, you are doing something radical in you right now, God. Come on. Come on. Just begin to pray for yourself right there where you're at. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray against every lie of the enemy. I pray against every stronghold in every mind. I pray against every hurt in every heart. I pray against every prison that has been holding these young people back. I pray against every lie of the enemy that has been saying and taking your worth. Oh, I pray in the name of Jesus right now whoo, that a fresh wind of the Spirit would release purpose and potential right now. I pray for healing in the name of Jesus in every heart and every mind and every spirit right now in the name of Jesus no longer are you held captive by those things no longer are you held captive by the enemy because the God of creation the God of creation has manifested himself in your heart and in your mind and has set you free now in the name of Jesus oh hallelujah yes Lord oh yes Lord tonight just believe believe in the deliverance deliverance of God. Believe that he's done something new. Come on right there. If you have not given your life to the Lord tonight, tonight's the night. Tonight's the night to rededicate your life to the Lord, to invite him to live in your heart right there where you are. Say, Lord, I admit that I've been living far away from you, Lord, and I believe that you died for me and that you created me. Tonight I choose to follow you according to the way you want me to live, Lord. I choose to let you be the Lord of my life and to not let my life be determined by anyone else but you. I love you, Lord, and I praise you. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Right there where you're at, I want you guys to type in the, in the live chat, I am better than basic. Come on, somebody. Right there in the chat, put I am better than basic. And enter this new school year, understanding how God sees you and the way he sees other people. We love you guys. Thank you, Pastor Paulina, for that amazing word. Guys, say it with me. I am better than basic. Say it again. I am better than basic. One more time. I am better than basic. Guys, we had a great time with you tonight. We miss you. We cannot wait to hug you, give you a high five. But in the meantime, don't forget to tune in on Zoom night every Wednesday at 7.30. And also, don't forget to go and check out our Instagram account at Entap You to see if you are the winner of one of the gift cards. Until next time, we miss you and we'll see you.